What's good, everybody, and welcome back to the channel for another episode of our Madden 23 San Antonio Express expansion draft only franchise. We are ready for off season five after a loss in the AFC Championship game last episode. Uh, if you didn't watch that one, I don't know if I'd even recommend it, honestly. We got hosted by the Cincinnati Bengals, who ended up winning the Super Bowl against the San Francisco 49ers. So the first game of this season and the last game of this season played each other for the Super Bowl. A lot of awards for us there on the right side. We got all of the really pertinent awards. Team is looking really, really good. So begs the question, where can we improve in this offseason? I think we may not have any like glaring holes, but we do have some. But before that, both of our coordinators got hired off in this hiring process. So we have to reset our coordinators. No surprise that both of them got hired off. We were number one in both offense and defense. So in terms of offensive coordinator here, uh, we're just gonna hire Brian Warner. He nobody had like the vertical power run that I wanted, so we go with a guy that just has no skills that we can build up ourselves. Defensively, we have a guy here in Sammy Wagner, who's already. Well built out. 4-3 cover 3 is also our defensive scheme. I'm trying to think if his talent tree is what we want though, or if it's the wrong side. It's tough to say. We could also have the guy like Josh McDaniels. I think we will hire Sammy Wagner to be our defensive coordinator. So now we just have to kind of build out our offensive coordinator tree here. Good thing we have like 900, almost 1,000 staff points to do so. We'll do this side here with tight ends and then boost some run block power some awareness for offensive line. Okay, we get both. I was wondering if you had to choose that one. I couldn't remember. You know, this is a nice little luxury to have. We lose our offensive coordinator, but we get to build out a complete tree for a new offensive coordinator instantly. I think... Stamina for the backfield, I like more than stamina. I like wide receiver tight end. I like, I mean, I like having increased stamina for everyone, but um, carrying for quarterbacks. Uh, after the upgrades of last episode, I don't even know if Brandon Nash needs it. His base carrying is 82, but getting up to 85 carrying. One thing I want to change here, though, is I'm going to give the catching to halfback and fullback. You know, our receivers are a lot better catching than they were before, so. I think getting some increased catching for Kevon Simmons could be beneficial. You know what? Except for the fact that we have Jalen Turner as a young receiver and we're probably drafting a receiver this year. That might be something I instantly regret. I don't, I don't know. Glenn Reddick is somebody that we like. 21 years old. He's going pretty late in the first round. We could probably trade up to 20. That's like it's probably as far up as I would want to trade up. Another guy we really like, Xavier Rose here, going at pick 27. We have pick 29. One of these first round defensive linemen, I think, is who I lean to going into this draft. We just kind of talk about maybe the needs of this team. In terms of where I have room for a starter, I think 
off-ball linebacker to fill the Kenny Pam final spot. And wide receiver to be the wide receiver two slash three. In terms of what we need for depth, I think what we can do here in these resignings will kind of determine. I'm going to just give John Smith a big one-year offer here. He accepts. Okay, so edge depth is something that we can maybe push an extra year back. Uh, Deshaun Walton, he's been our backup tackle. He does not accept the increased one-year offer. So I don't hate the other tackle depth that we have here. So I still don't know if like tackle depth is really high on my list. We are very thin at safety though. So I want Paul Parnell. He says, yes, that's good. We had like Dylan, who's there, like 60 overall playing a little bit. Sean Walton would be a 19 million franchise tag. And like I said, I don't hate the depth that we have behind him. So that's going to be it in terms of resigning. We got back John Smith. We got back Paul Purnell to be a backup edge and a backup safety. Um, just on one year deals, maybe push the need to draft those position one year down the line. But let's get into our draft and maybe kind of what the game plan is again with these off-season episodes i like to more talk about my game plan rather than going through you know every single player that's on my board that's what we do during the regular season is deep dive into everyone that i like in this draft class jacoby mccain i guess would be maybe the highest rated person that uh I'm very much so considering B awareness, B block shed, B power move. Elite strength is good. He's fallen 17 spots in this draft. You have to wonder why. He was like a borderline top five player before. So the fact that he's dropping makes him an intriguing player. Xavier Rose is kind of the guy that I was just assuming that we would get a little bit less strength, but a little bit more speed. Has a injury. Another guy with two Bs and a C in terms of his three moves, you know. So very similar players there. You take the guy that has something in an elite or the guy that's maybe a little bit more of a well-rounded. Glenn Reddick here. Decent speed. We just saw. What happened to his speed? I think this is the second time this has happened to me, man. I can't remember if the first time was... Bears series or if they were both here in this Express series, but that's twice we've had an edge rusher that had good to great, but it went down to decent once it was confirmed. Jacob Leach ends up with elite speed. You know, that A elite speed, A zone coverage, A hit power makes me want him an awful lot. Receiver, let's look at where Joey Vasquez is. Okay, so both his jumping and his speed end up in the high end of where he was projected. So that makes me like him even more. I think wide receiver is going to be our number one need in this offseason. Like when Jalen Turner was injured, our passing game was legitimately worse. Just because at that point I had two guys that I could trust because Sanchez and Vasquez were both not Vasquez, sorry, I'm just seeing his name here. Sanchez and Turner were both hurt. And then all of a sudden I was basically just force feeding Hazleton and smart the ball. Wasn't good for our offense, so I'd like to get a fifth guy. I feel like if you have at least three guys you can trust on every given Sunday, you're golden. Looking at what we have in this draft, we have a one, two, three, and a six. I'd be willing to maybe trade like a three or a four for next year to maybe trade up a little bit. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to tank our draft next year, so I'm willing to trade up a little bit. But I also feel like with the players that we have in this draft. We shouldn't have to trade up too much to get the guys that I want. I feel like 
There was a guy in the first round that I like. Uh, I was going to say either Riddick or Rose, but now it's looking at like maybe McCain or Rose will be the guy as Reddick is a lot slower than we thought and McCain dropped a lot of spots. So I think defensive tackle in the first round is looking quite likely for this team. Even though like we have two starters there, they both have bad injury. They've both gotten injured every year. So whoever we draft, whether it's Rose or McCain, they're going to have a chance to play for us. In terms of focus players, McCain, I think I'm going to put him in there just because just to get his true talent I think Jacob Leach I'd like to know his true talent and then maybe Cameron Coleman we wouldn't get 100% on him he's 23 but look at that athleticism he has C to F injury though if we can put a uh, focus training on him and we figure out that it's C though I might actually prefer him over either of the defensive tackles as our first round pick so yeah we're gonna do McCain Coleman and Leach a few defenders I think overall we saw throughout the season that maybe our defense needs a little bit more help than our offense our defense had some moments of being dominant. As we will accept Kevon Simmons' fifth year option, just delay his re signing one more year. For Wyatt Casanza, I think we're going to do the same. The reason we did it for Kevon Simmons is because he's already 99 overall, so we're not like making him more expensive. The reason we're doing it with Wyatt Costanzo is because he does not want to return to San Antonio. And we're already overpaying for Timmy Reed. After his production last year, uh, that might not have been a good choice by me. But we're kind of already... That's the choice that we made. And so we do, want, do we want to overpay two defensive linemen who don't want to be here? Two with bad injuries as well? The league is under the impression that I want to trade Luis Sanchez remember Johns he's like a 350 pound defensive tackle unfortunately I'd have to basically since this is draft only I'd have to cut what we traded him for and so the Bengals offering us a third is really the only one that's even slightly tempting but I'm not helping the Bengals out screw the Bengals man that game was nuts Yeah, just like I talked about, we're going to have Cameron Coleman, Jacoby McCain, and um, Jacob Leach be our... Where's Jacob Leach? Right there. Jacob Leach be our three focus players. Two of them will get up to 100%. McCain and... I already forgot the other guy's name. I'll remember if we draft him. Between them at defensive tackle, Jacob Leach, I feel like we're drafting anyway, but... Um, it'll get, be good just to know what to expect in terms of overall. Speaking of off-ball linebackers, the Bengals signed Fred Warner. We saw that they kind of lost star power on defense other than Jesse Bates. They add another star here. Derek Brown, lost by the Broncos, going to the Cardinals. Matt Orr, I remember him when he got drafted. He was in our first draft class. Eddie Shelton... Is Josh Allen off the Bills? Did he retire? He can never retired. We're not that deep into the series. Marlon Royal, I remember as well. Carlos Hatchet, I remember. We're starting to see, you know, the generated classes come up for contract here. And it's kind of cool to see some of the guys we didn't draft. Kind of how they've developed Devon Burks, we just saw there. One of the first guys that like it was debatable about it. Well, not one of, he was the first guy that I wanted, but we ended up passing on in the draft. You know, just four years into the risk race, he's an 82 star. So I think passing on him to draft Michael Franklin might've been a good idea for us. Fred Warner to the Bengals. And then De Derek Brown leaving the Broncos, the Cardinals. It's kind of the two 
biggest things that happen in free agency in terms of uh, for our team. But I want to see if Josh Josh Allen is just 31 years old. Yeah, he's still 99 overall. Is this the last year of his contract? Does he want to like groom? Still got two years left on his deal. That is a it's a crazy deal because they're paying Shelton like a starter. Very odd move. Oh, who am I to judge it? Let's take a look at mock draft five, see where some of the guys that we want are going. Jacoby McCain going at 15. Might be too much for us to trade up. Boyd Gary, somebody I haven't talked about yet. Uh, super fast receiver. Going at 21, that's within kind of the range. Let's take a look at him here. The reason I haven't really talked about him is he's 23 years old. Yes, elite speed. That could be 99 speed, a spec catch, e deep route. He just looks a lot like Eddie Hazleton. And so I like Joey Vasquez as a complimentary player a little bit more than Floyd Gary, especially because we wouldn't have to trade up to get him. Xavier Rose currently going to the Broncos, a division rival. I'd like to trade up unless Jacoby McCain looks like significantly better than Xavier Rhodes, which I don't think he does just based off his ratings. We'll see his true talent once we simulate a week. We know Xavier Rhodes is round one to two. So unless like Jacoby McCain is a top five talent in this draft, I don't imagine he will be. Not that this class is super great in general. In terms of the five classes that we've had, I'd maybe rate this as the weakest class. Maybe between this one and year three class. He's a better talent. He's a round one talent. That could be like one overall though. Who do we draft? Is it Xavier Rose or is it Jacoby McCain? Based on name value alone, I like Jacoby McCain over Xavier Rose. I think they both have solid names, though. 21 years old for Xavier Rose. Jacoby McCain is also 21. In terms of size, Jacoby is like six foot six, and Xavier Rose is six foot one. Both are pretty good with injury. Both have two Bs and a C in terms of like the three big, like the two pass mush moves plus block shed. Cameron Coleman, F injury. I think that takes him out of contention. We don't need another F injury defensive lineman. If it was C injury, I would have been willing to take him. Jacob Leach, also F injury. That's unfortunate, but if he's your third linebacker, I'm less concerned about it especially because i know michael franklin has like 90 i think he has like 99 stamina and uh injury i can't remember what victor giles is it's not as good but he hasn't had many injury issues so having a lower rated injury guy it's not great but it's not the worst maybe that Gets me to look at the other off-ball linebacker options, though. There were a couple other off-ball linebackers here. Let's just take a look at them. Langford, also elite speed, 4-5-3. Hey, awareness, A zone coverage, A to C hit power. So we could have the same, you know, big three in terms of the A's. Caleb Williams, 22 years old. 4-5 flat, though. Speed is good. Like, I'm... I'm confident that's like 88 speed plus. A injury. So this is the guy, if you don't want a high injury player, that you get this guy. Let's talk about Brendan Waters, 23 years old. Slowest 40 of the elite speed guys. Not really interested in him. Let's go Joel Andrews, 23 years old. 449's pretty good. A man coverage. You'd imagine that zone coverage is A as well. I think I like the two. I think I like both of these left outside linebackers more than I like either of those right outside linebackers. 
uh, Caleb Williams. So if it's not Leach, you'd have to guess it would be Caleb Williams just because he has the A injury. Whereas uh, Langford, the other off-ball linebacker, doesn't. He just has ratings really similar to Leach, and I'd rather have Leach than him. If I'm going to take a perhaps injury-prone guy. One thing I want to do here, just show that we do not edit the draft classes here. I feel like I kind of have to do this just because we've been having some insane drafts. So I want to make sure um, just a little bit of proof of, proof of concept that I, I don't cheat with these drafts. Um, let's get into this draft. Dave Ware goes first to the Jets. Troy Robertson will head to Miami. First quarterback off the board to the Rams in Nick Elliott. Another quarterback goes to Green Bay. Garrison Spencer. Jeremy Weathersby is a guy that I thought was pretty good. He was just way too high in the draft. I also think he has bad injury. Bears go Gordon Cunningham. Owen Feldman. Didn't really familiarize myself too much with the top of this class. Um, I didn't love the way the top of this class looked anyway, and they were just at positions that we didn't really need for the most part. David Mooney to the Browns. Center Kerry Gannon to the Eagles. Johnny Meadows from Florida. Percy Taylor. And it goes to the Jags from Wake Forest. Okay, Jacoby McCain does go at 15. If he had fallen a little bit more, I might have picked him over Rose, but just, I didn't know. Like, we have to trade up, like, what, three or four spots for Rose or almost 20 spots for McCain. I just didn't feel like the difference was worth it. We got Floyd Gary. We'll definitely take a look at him going to the Cowboys at 21. This is around pick 25. We're a couple picks ahead of. The Broncos, this is around where I want to trade up. I'd love to not have to give up my two or my three. Like a next year four. Let's just see if it'll work here. Trading with the Lions. And they say yes. Okay, so at the cost of our next year four, we're able to jump the Broncos. And get in a position to draft Xavier Rose. 21 years old, 6'1", 304, B, power, and finesse. Hidden, dev, 93 strength is a little bit higher than I thought it would be. 71 speed, not great, but 82 acceleration. Doesn't have the good stamina, but I mean, he's our DT3. Absolute dub of a pick. Will he keep us in dev if he's not going to be a starter for this team? It kind of just depends on probably how many snaps he gets. As an injury replacement, where did the Broncos pivot to? They stay with defensive tackle going Jonathan Carson out of Alabama. Was not on our board. Larry Gilmore was on our board going to the Chiefs. Chiefs always seem to draft well. Raheem Hunter, the safety out of Texas, will finish out the first round. Into the second. Cameron Coleman goes just a couple picks before us. He's going to be somebody that we take a look at as well. I really like the look of him. Just F injury and 23 years old was a little bit too much of something to get over for me. I think this is the time where we go get, I think, our number one need in the offseason, although Joey Vasquez is the sixth best receiver on the board according to consensus ranking. I think he's the best player on the board at receiver. Maybe the best player on the board, period, at this point. 19 spots down. We could probably trade down a few picks, get a pick that can help us trade back up for Jacob Leach. Because both of these guys are going to go in the second round. 
we've already traded our next year's fourth. If we could pick up a fourth, maybe that could come up and help us get Jacob Leach. Or do we go with Charles Langsford? Because he's going to be available a little bit later. We wouldn't have to trade up as much. Or Caleb Williams. He might even be available with our third round pick. This is like the least sure of who I wanted to draft I've, been, I've had coming into the draft ever. Probably just due to the lack of like glaring needs other than receiver. Like I knew we were drafting Joey Vasquez. That much I knew. But between like Coleman, McCain, and Rose, didn't know. Between these like three off-ball linebackers, don't really know. Jacob Leach would require the most to trade up for. Like I... I like him the best though. It just are you gonna are we gonna use that much capital to just trade up from for a guy with F injury? I don't know. So not looking to go up too far here. This brown straight is interesting, so that they're giving me kind of what I want. Down five or so spots, pick up a fourth. That's kind of what I'm looking for. I want the fourth this year if we can help it. I think the Browns are offering us the the kind of what we want the most. So we're going to accept this deal, move back five spots. Emmett Mayweather, he was on our board, so a nice pick by the Browns, I think. We get one of the receivers, so now our guy is the fifth best receiver on the consensus board. Let's back up. He's still the fifth best receiver on the board. We could maybe trade back further, but I don't want to risk it anymore. He's got round one talent. We're taking him. Six foot four, 233, 21 years old. 454 four speed. Not incredible speed, but a lot of A's. Incredible size. I think complements the receivers that we already have in Jalen Turner and Eddie Hazleton really well. He's hitting dev as well. 89 speed, 92 jumping, 89 acceleration. 80 agility and 87 change of direction for a guy his size. Not bad in the slightest. Our hidden dev streak in this series is actually nuts. I, I felt pretty good about Joey Vasquez being hidden, if I'm being honest, but Xavier Rose I was pleasantly surprised with. I'd love to see if we can get like a 3, 4, and a 7 and... Just straight up and take Leech now. How close are we with that package? Not very. Okay. Leech isn't too far down the board. Nineteen spots down the board, so we can simulate a little bit if we need to. Will we need to though? So we're about a three or four to next year five, because then maybe we could turn R6 into a next year five. Still not a particularly close. What about next year's three? If we do this though, it's a lot closer. I would be trading our this year third for next year's third, if we can get this to work. We might need a... we could probably swing that fourth mm, I don't know if we're gonna get this done with the Eagles I really don't want to do this huh this is a decently high second
They really, really wanted Jeffrey Norris. Or at least they just didn't think we were giving him sufficient value. Simulated a couple picks. Let's try it again here with the Panthers. Let's try it's the Jaguars, it's not the Panthers. Panthers just picked. My mouth said Jaguars. My my mouth said Panthers, but my brain said Jaguars. Two threes and a five. No dice. Are we even going to be able to get Jacob Leach? I'm not trading in next year's two. I want the one and the two next year. Couple picks yet again. A three, two threes and a five. Buffalo, they've been making some questionable moves this offseason. Do they make another? Man, is middle linebacker on their list of needs? It is not. Just let me trade up for Jacob Leach, man. Just let me get my F injuries athletic linebacker. Time to go to the Steelers. <laughs> We're so close, man. We just can't get it done. I mean, we're... We're making it look like uh, two threes and a five, but that three is the last pick in the third round. We got to remember, it's almost like a high four that, that there's a three. So it's hard to blame a lot of these guys for saying no. Stillers didn't have a need at middle linebacker. I was comfortable simulating that. The Vikings don't have one either. Let's do one more pick. They take quarterback with the 50th pick. Colts have middle linebacker on their board. We are not getting past this Colts pick. We're trading for this Colts pick. Two threes. Let's try this year's six. No. I don't know why I thought that would work. It's more like hope than thought, I would say. That works finally. Two threes and a five. I said I didn't want to obliterate next year's draft. We don't have a three through five next year. I'm planning on trading for more next year's picks with kind of what we have left of this draft. But what I plan to do with this pick is draft Jacob Leach. Round two to three talents, not great. He's probably like 70 overall. But how is, I don't care what, like we know he's good. He's hidden dev too. We go another year in the streak now, five years, wow. I really thought this is the year our streak would break. And if you're new to the channel and don't know what the streak is, I have now gone five years without drafting a normal dev player in the first and second round. Let's trade for some next year's picks here. We get a next year three offer from the Titans. And the reason it's impressive, I'm not trading for the Falcons pick again, nor the Chiefs. So it looks like it's going to be the Titans next year's three. Or the Ravens. Titans or Ravens? I didn't see the Ravens before. I think the Ravens still have Lamar Jackson, so we'll go to Tennessee. The reason it's impressive that I've done that over five years, it's not like we've had 10 picks, like one in the first one and the second every year. That's probably at least 20 picks, at least I'd say. We averaged, yeah, I'd say two first and two seconds every draft, especially because we had so many in that first draft. Chris Dawkins could be an interesting addition to the wide receiver room. It's that other receiver, I already forgot his name, that had he was a playmaker or physical. 
I might have gone with him, but I'm going to take Lance Cook with the intention of him being a puncher. He has elite kick power, the accuracy. We could use another face in the receiver room too, though. I think we go Lance Cook. Drafting him removes us from the need to be paying both our kicker and our puncher. And I, with the team getting a lot more expensive recently, 99 kick power. We have drafted two of those in this series. I'm three for three for drafting hidden dev kickers and punchers. I am hereby christening myself best kicker punter drafter on YouTube. But, um, Maybe we try to get a sixth round pick here. Nobody wants to give us a sixth. Nobody wants to give us a sixth next year for the seventh round, huh? Can't blame anybody. That's a not great value. It's a sixth though. Come on, man. I bet against the Saints. This worked out for the Eagles so far this year. Maybe five years in the future it can work out again. Although, I mean, it's for their seventh next year. I will be editing the faces and the names of these players. And when I'm done with that, uh, we'll get back to you. All right, we are done editing the faces. Not the names. I said names before, but like the, I meant like their equipment. Xavier Rose, 74. Hidden Dev, 74. Or overall, I already said that. What? What was I trying to say? I don't know. This video is running long for your boy. Only 73 stamina, but the injury's up there. I think he'll be a perfect injury replacement for defensive tackle this year. Joey Vasquez, kind of exactly where I thought he'd be. I thought he was like in that 74, 75 range. Uh, 86 spec catch, 81 short route, 84 catch in traffic, 81 release. 81 catching, of course, medium and deep route have a long way to go, but in terms of a guy that has a skill set that can help us out this year, I like it. Jacob Leach ends up being a little bit better. Uh, we moved into right outside linebacker. He's also 72 at middle linebacker. 90 speed. We already knew that, but 85 hit power is good. 70 zone coverage. Injury was like a tad better than I thought it was going to be. So I really like that pick. And then Lance Cook, like we said, we drafted him to be a punter. 99 kick power, 78 kick accuracy. Already have a Tim Vogel replacement. He's up for contract this year. And now at this point, we're not going to resign him. We already have a guy that's just as good as he is uh, backing him up. Well, let's take a look at the league's draft in general. Something we like to do as well. Every year, kind of take a look at the top of the draft, some of the best players, what our division did. Let's take a look at Nick Elliott, the first quarterback taken. Not a ton of deep accuracy, but in terms of throw power, medium and short accuracy, it looks pretty decent. Let's see what that dev is for the Rams. Only star, but I still think a solid take at quarterback for the Rams. On the number one overall pick, Dave Ware. He's okay. I think that's kind of an L unless this guy's superstar or X Factor for the Jets. Let's see if he is. He is not. Again, wasn't really familiar with the top of this draft because I wasn't really impressed with the top of this draft. Garrison Spencer. 96 throw power. A little bit more well balanced in accuracy, but nothing like as strong as we saw. From the guy taken before him. Also star dev for him. So I'd have to give Elliott the edge over Spencer. If we were looking for a quarterback, I would give Elliott the edge and being a better player. We like Jeremy Weathersby, just, yeah, 78 injury, 78 stamina. Was too high in the draft, 23 years old. So we were never really in play for him. Turns out we got lucky because he was normal dev. Marquez Callaway, pass protecting tackle. Not an incredible athlete, but not horrible either. Be superstar to dub. If it's Sar, you're still chilling. I think they're chilling with that pick. 
Gordon Cunningham. This is the guard. This is my favorite offensive lineman in the class who's just way too early for us to draft. You know, the high strength, the high speed ball for those guys. I mean, 82 base run block power is pretty guy. I can run block power. Start up. Owen Feldman, another quarterback taken. Just 69 overall. Not an elite throw power or speed. This guy's like X Factor. This is probably a bit of a L for the Saints. Start up. Our seventh round next year is looking up. <laughs> uh, Jermichael Carrington. Really solid looking corner. 77 zone, 69 man. But decent size, good speed. I think that's a good pick here for the Seahawks. Star Dev. Not seeing a lot of abilities here. Yeah, I think that this has to be cemented as the worst draft we've had so far. I mean, it makes sense. You had the best draft in year four of the series. You balance it out with the worst here in year five. David Mooney. Not a bad pick here. Would like a little bit more strength from your tackles though. Star Dev. It's just a bunch of players in the mid 70s. Let's look at Jacoby McCain. It ends up being normal devs. 75 overall. Like I said, it was probably going to be a difference of like one overall. It ended up being that. Uh, he's got better acceleration than Rose, but worse speed. The strength is all honestly pretty close as well. Both had terrible stamina. So I think the hidden dev has to give Xavier Rose the dub. I think we made a good choice. Got the better player later, but. Had we drafted Jacoby McCain, I mean, it would have ruined our hidden dev streak, but I wouldn't have complained. So I'm glad Tennessee liked McCain over Rose because it was kind of just whoever was going later, really, that we were going to take. Let's take a look at Glenn Riddick. This is so weird. He had good to great speed. Went down to decent. Goes to our division rival Chargers. Superstar to the division. The first guy with abilities we've seen. All right. Glenn Raddick, edge rusher going to the division. Superstar. Kind of slow, though. But Gary ends up being 98 and 98 instead of 99 and 99. Goes to my least favorite team in the NFL. And he's a star dev. So I just have to say... Uh, I'll give Joey Vasquez the dub too. So I think we went two for two on the kind of debatable guys. Although I was kind of always in on Vasquez over Gary. I don't know how much of a debate it was. Um, is there anyone else that we felt like we needed to go into? I'm trying to think. Uh, another defensive tackle here. Kendrick Newsom, I think, was on our board. He looks decent, if unspectacular. Um, Cameron Coleman, I do remember, we want to go to. He ends up being the best guy in the second round. Normal dev, though. Just bad injury and in stamina, but 77 power moves is good. Good athlete. Emmett Mayweather was on our board. No, another, another normal dev. So we had a lot of guys on our board that would have broken our streak. We ended up picking the right ones. Chad Stevenson. The Chargers had a good draft. 21 years old, hidden dev. Good speed. That's a good corner. I'm going to give him a better number. It's like 29 is fine. This guy deserves to be better than a 45. He's a good prospect. Chargers, really good draft. 
probably better than ours. I don't think. I mean, we had four stars. Are any of them going to be superstar? I mean, our kicker probably is. Or, I mean, our punter that we drafted a kicker to push the punter might be a superstar. Marquise Robbins, I remember being on our board. Had the high injury. Normal dev, though. Some year our luck is going to run out. Charles Langford would have been the guy instead of Jacob Leach, probably. It was him and between another guy. I can't remember his name now, but I'll remember it once I see it. See the dev. If it's star, I think we got a dub. If it's higher than that... Okay... Langford Superstar. Gordon Gatewood, I remember being on our board. Wait, was he? Was I thinking of someone else? 64? He was. That was a major L. <laughs> Jermaine Crable was good. Eighty-nine short routes. Wow. Is this one of those specialized guys? This guy could be a superstar? Just star, wow. It's a really good pick by the Seahawks. They've had two good picks. Good draft for the Seahawks. This is kind of our option to maybe upgrade center. It wouldn't have been an upgrade though. He's it's just similar to Gallimore, he also has low injury. Where's that one linebacker? Is it right outside linebacker, right? He's available in the fifth? Wasn't Bo Carruthers. Where is this guy? There's no way he was available in the sixth. Is he not a right outside linebacker? Oh, he's a left outside linebacker. It's Caleb Williams. This is the Colts. Hidden dev. Wow. Okay. These. All right. We were keyed in on this linebacker class. 89 speed. Okay. No, didn't have the hit power. A little bit worse than the zone coverage, but. Star. Wouldn't have gotten injured as much as Jacob Leach, though. I think they're all really similar. I mean, Langford being superstar gives him the edge, unless Leach has superstar, too. Let's take a look at the best players in the class. Lance Cook ends up being the best clip player in the class. Weathersby and a bunch of other players tied at 76 after that. I don't think we've looked at Matt Bennett yet. Good, good pick for the Bills here. Star. So, from what I've seen right now, Redick of the Chargers might be the best pick in this draft. Uh, unless this guard's superstar, yeah, he's not even close. So, yeah, just not a lot of high-end talent in this class. Redick, in our division, they might have got the best player in this class. He was on our... Uh, if he was good to great speed, we would have picked him. He just went down to decent. I was like, okay, we're, we're done. Jonathan Carson here for the Broncos. The guy, they went from Xavier Rose to Carson and uh, kind of bit him. 70 normal. Not a great draft for the Broncos. Not even a little bit. Pretty bad. Chargers, we've already seen their two really good picks. Uh, Larry Gilmore. 
ends up going to the Chiefs. He's normal. Okay, so only... So the Chargers had a really good draft. I think the rest of the division kind of struggled a bit. We, Of course, we had a decent draft ourselves. It's really between us and the Ch Chargers in terms of best draft. They got the superstar. We got, you know, the two extra players. I don't know if you really count the punter, though, so the extra player. I think it's a debate. We got a training camp standout for Morris Morgan. He's going to get a boost ahead of this next season. We're going to boost his zone coverage just so that when I upgrade him, we can upgrade slots. Here are our mentors for the year. Sam Malu, Jamison Crowder, and Jermaine Fetty will be the mentors for the offense. Jermaine Fetty, of course, returning after last season also being our mentor. Sheldon Rankins will mentor the defensive tackles. Juan Alexander will be the mentor for Jacob Leach. And Desmond King will mentor the corners. And that brings us to cuts. I don't want to go through all the cuts that I did, but um, maybe a couple of the notable ones. Uh, Reggie Flynn on our practice squad, our bust from last year. Vogel, we ended up cutting, tried to trade him, but it didn't really work out. And those were, that was kind of it in terms of the big cuts for us. And now we get to do the preseason upgrades. Come on, Simmons up here first. Right tackle. I got a speed. Let's go, man. A 95 speed running back. There's never been a better running back I've ever had in a franchise. <laughs> Come on, Simmons. He's incredible. Uh, Lewis Smart for impact blocks, kind of nuts. Catching, because impact block, like when he's on a running play when he pulls, like impact block helps him make better blocks, and he just got plus four there, which is that's awesome. Brandon Nash, <laughs> he's 23 years old. I was about to say 22, but he was a 22-year-old rookie. Another carry for Brandon Nash. That is nuts. I love having a quarterback that's not just going to fumble all the time. 86 carry. That's like an average starting running back. Darius Connor. Hybrid. Up for contract this year. It's a, an acceleration and two zone coverage. Really like that upgrade a lot for Connor. Acceleration up to 92. And zone coverage up to 90. That's awesome. Delvin Walls, going to go with hybrid here once again. Not as good of a hybrid upgrade if you ask me. You just see how far behind he is in coverage to somebody like Darius Connor. JT Bean, our superstar dev corner as of the end of the season. Upgrades, um, really good player. Somebody that can we view him as maybe a long term outside corner? Maybe he doesn't have the speed or size. Maybe he's just going to be slot long term. But I like him more than I like Morris Morgan at this point. Um, despite Morris Morgan being better in both sides, being like the better athlete with size and speed. Cedric Gallimore thought about replacing him in this offseason, just didn't really have the prospects that I felt would be worth it. So he'll retain his center spot for this upcoming season up to 79 overall. His backup, who I would, oh man, I just wish he was hidden dev. I like him so much better as a prospect. But normal dev at lineman is just basically impossible to overcome. Jalen Turner, I think really broke out in the playoffs for us. In terms of our playoff MVP, it might have had to be like Jalen Turner. He was really good in both games. Excited to see what he can do in year two. Hopefully he can get up to star dev so he can be a better, bigger part of this team. I really like the player. He needs to get better at route running though, but I mean, I say that, but he gets open in the game. So does he really? I don't know. We're going to start season five against the Denver Broncos, the team that we beat in the playoffs. 
Um, so, you know, an, another year of regression for a lot of their veterans. We see Devontae Adams. He was 97 in the playoffs, now down to 95 now. Is Russ even still their starting quarterback? We'll preview the team when that episode comes. But speaking of previewing teams, let's take one more look at the team that we've got here in San Antonio. And just where we sit at the end of this offseason. Um, you know, Eddie Hazleton, Vasquez, Turner, the receiver trio, Juan Simmons, absolute menace, uh, Lewis Smart. Uh, gonna be 99, get those gold shoes this year, as will Brandon Nash, honestly. Um, offensive line, really solid. Right person's incredible. Defense, a lot of X factors. Um, if you rose third DT, I think we're in a really good spot as a team. This is a team that you look at and say, like, yeah, it's Super Bowl or bust. That's where we are at this point as a team. And so that's the expectations, whether or not we can do it. I guess we have a full season ahead of us to see. There's always stuff like injuries that can derail a season. Um, maybe somebody doesn't want to resign, so we trade them, and that just puts a weak spot on our team. You never know. That's what we'll have to see coming up here in Season 5. We'll be starting that up here soon, and I will see you then.